Spike Murphy. Uh, we had Alcoa report earnings. By the way, the stock this morning up in the pre-market session kind of sets the tone for earnings season. Well, at least it used to. A little bit. Uh, what are you, are you inclined to think that this stock market rally continues? For now, yes. Uh, I don't think it goes too much higher, but there's nothing out there to cause a massive sell-off. We got over the Brexit. You're seeing what's going on over in Japan. I think is really Japan up 7% since last week. I think that's really giving people a clear signal that they can go into the market. What do you believe is the biggest driver behind this rally? Uh, the bond market. I think there's really no place else for people to put their money, so they're chasing this rally. Th this has been an unloved rally. A lot of people are underinvested. You look at a lot of major mutual funds like Fidelity um, mm -hmm. that's underperforming the overall market, so they need to play catch up, they, not to mention hedge funds, so people need to get money, allocate money to the market, so that's what's pushing the market up right there's now. There's still a lot of fear, Dagan, that this is a Federal Reserve low interest rate driven rally, and that if that changes, things quickly change in the U.S. stock market. It's driven by not just the Federal Reserve, but central banks around the world. When yep. you have central banks buying bonds, buying even corporate bonds in Europe, and interest rates go negative, where if you want to own, say, a German government bond, you have to pay the German government money right. to lend yeah. them money, mm -hmm. which just turns the world of investing upside down. The fact that the 10-year Treasury's yield hit a record low on Friday, it, I, one, it is the reason that money's going into stocks, but it still makes me very nervous sure. that there is a, a bubble and, and individual investors, either they are dead wrong and have missed this rally or they're dead right, but they've been getting out of U.S. stocks, 67 billion out of U.S. stock funds this year so far. And, and, and essentially money has been leaving U.S. stock funds since the crash in 08. So what would you say is your biggest concern uh, being in the U.S. stock market right now? Biggest concern is that the Fed will eventually stop. You know, Dagan mentions a bubble. So th this is, has been a bubble, or, or it's been buying created by the global central banks. So when that stops, you, whenever we talk about rates rising, you see the market go through a minor correction. But then we've never, we're lower for longer. We've never had a sustained rally in rates. So I think hopefully when that stops, the Fed is able to ease out of it so that people can realize that rates are going higher. And Let's talk earnings expectations because Alcoa, it was, it was that guidance and better than expected. Blah, it, that's what led to the rally that we're seeing in Alcoa shares. Yes. But we talked to a lot of people yesterday at the, about the markets who said it's the bank earnings that are coming the rest of the week that are going to be key. Bank earnings are key. Um, what are they you they for? most certainly are. I think, again, like we said last quarter and the quarter before that, the expectations have come down so much that I think the banks, they just come in in line. You're going to see a rally in the banks. You've seen corrections across the board in all of them. Uh, I expect JP Morgan to put up a very strong quarter and money to flow back into the banks. The How banks, do you expect that the plunge in yield that you just talked about is going to affect? Guys like J.P. Morgan and Citigroup. I'd say it's not really a plunge. It's yields that have been dropping for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know, we've known we're in a low interest rate environment. We've been in a low interest rate environment. And the banking sector is the only sector in the U.S. market that's not up for the year. So I think people who don't want to chase the market, that don't want to buy an Amazon or Google or Facebook at an all-time high, will look to the banks that's for a place to allocate money. Amazon being hitting one record high after another. A lot of these consumer stocks expected to be the best performing group in terms of earnings mm -hmm. for this current quarter with earnings growth of 9.4 percent uh, following on quarter after quarter of success but mm -hmm. again you get to valuations and people have rewarded that success and bought these stocks so and Harlan I think a little toppy I know you were here the morning we were talking about yeah. the UK's exit from the EU and that was oh my gosh Armageddon we saw the stock market right. stock. we've regained back all of those losses so yeah. is that no longer a concern. Well, do you, I mean, my, my thinking on the political unease and the uncertainty is that, you know, we've gotten past this initial phase, but we really haven't seen how that's going to bear out, how they're actually going to exit the European Union, if we're going to see other exits out of the European Union, and what that does um, to the, the, the European experiment. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we going to see more, like, QE out of the European Central Bank? I mean, like, what, what can we expect there to sort of ease? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to see yeah. more QE, because they really can't step away right now, or else the market it's, we, we don't know the markets might falter so the QE needs to remain there so that's what's propping up the markets the FTSE at an all-time high as we speak so right. I think Brexit though is a great example of how the political world impacts the markets so you get um, it's a leave there's a Brexit coming
following markets sell off massively around the world. A lot of that program trading, algorithmic trading, just uh, machines reading headlines well, look, and selling on that news, and then we rally right back. And that. look at what the pound is doing, because again, if you, even if you get a little bit of clarity with Theresa May going to be mm -hmm. the next prime minister, it'll happen Wednesday night. The pound was below, was uh, close to a dollar twenty-nine, and it it bounced back massively on the news that she was de she was going to be the prime minister, and also you had an incredible rally in very British centric stocks, mm -hmm. stocks that where most of their business comes from Britain. So again, a little bit of clarity, you can get a big bounce. Right. Sell-offs on headlines usually create opportunity. All right, amen, amen.